Hey, Todd here. So the people at Zhuin, I hope I'm saying that close to correctly, sent me this light, the Molus B100, to check out and give my honest opinion review of it. I'm not getting paid for this video or anything. So we're gonna look at this light, see how it operates, check out its, all its features, all that kind of stuff, and uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it. The release date on this will be uh, today, May 16th, it'll be available. So let's open the box and check it out. So now we got the box open and we've made a little lighting change. It was a little contrasty and I wasn't digging it. Um, so let's see what's in the box. So you get a nice, uh, pretty long power cord here, which is great. The shorter cord's just not good. So this is a good long power cord for it. And you get your Bowens reflector, Bowens mount, which is pretty universal, which I really like because there's a lot of accessories that are aftermarket kind of thing that you can put, use when you have the Bowens mount. So that's really nice. And it's a really good, nice reflector. It's really nice. That feels really good. And we've got the light itself right here, which is a nice build quality. You've got a couple different knobs here and here. So you've got your control, your color temp over here and your uh, power output, the dim over here, which is nice. And on the very back, you've got a little screen that's gonna show you what your settings are and the on and off switch at the bottom and where you put the plug in. My one concern from the get-go here is where this plug is. I know it's probably put there just because it's a, an easy place to put it. But for me, I shoot a lot of stuff where I bounce the light off the ceiling and off of different things that give kind of a nice overall feel to a room to make something not look lit. And sometimes when you're trying to get this light to go straight up, that cord becomes a problem. So it's not a huge deal, you know, cause you're only off a little bit when you're making that adjustment, but it is something I typically look at when I purchase a light. So that's what you get in the box. Now let's put this thing on a stand and put it through some paces, see what we think, see how it operates and see how all these features work. Let's get to that now. Got it all plugged in now and the cord which I said was a good length. It's just shy of 15 feet, which is really nice for a nice long cord. And then we talked about the Bowens mount for the reflector. There's a little knob right here. You just pull back that releases it. And there's a little uh, slots right here where these little pegs go right into. And you just give it a little quick twist and it's in. And then to release, you just pull back on this little guy right here and twist it back out and you're good to go. And it being Bowens, I was talking about it being, you know, other accessories that are aftermarket or whatever. I've got a nice beauty dish here that I've had for quite a while and it just mounts right on there, perfect. And so you've got other accessories, which is having that Bowens mount is really nice for that purpose. And then this guy just comes right off and again, you just mount this guy right on and you are good to go for that. And then once we power it on with the switch here, we've got right here the um, control, the brightness, the dim of it, everything. And it's really nice, which I've found is that with a touch, so if you're full power, got to put my glasses on so I can see up close here. So when I maxed out 100% and you just give it a one click push in, it turns it, turns it completely off. And then another click, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80 and back up to 100. Just with those little quick clips, quick clicks. <laughs> it's hard to say. Quick clips, uh, pushing in that a little knob right there and then you can fine tune 
with it as well, adjusting it right there, which is really nice to make things go nice and quick. And then the output you can see right on the back here, um, it shows you where you're at like at 100% and then zero and then the 20 and all that really quickly to see on there, which is great. And the same thing works on the other side, flash myself real quick, where you've got your color temperature. Um, so if you do the one click, well, you can start at 6,500 degrees Kelvin, then you click it again and it drops clear down to 2,700, then up to 32, 43, 55, and then back up again to 6,500 degrees Kelvin, which the, that making those simple little quicks for, for those big adjustments is fantastic. I love, I love that it does that. And you've got, you know, just your quick little view on the back to see where you're at, which is nice. It's got a couple fans on either side and it takes a while for them, like they're not even on yet. So it's got to heat up a little bit before it, uh, the fans kick on because do I have it at 100%? I don't even have it at 100%. So they haven't even kicked on yet. So it will be nice to, once they kick on, to know what kind of sound it's going to, those fans do put out, if it's much at all. So now I want to do um, a little quick comparison with my Nanlite Forza 60, just to see output, to see which is, which is, putting out more obviously and which is brighter which isn't that kind of thing so we're going to do I'm going to get my nan light and we'll do a little side by side get the meter out and look at uh, where we are f-stop wise output wise so let's power this off oh fans are on now and it barely makes a sound I mean I wonder if I can get my mic up to it yeah I'm, I'm right next to it and it is super quiet so that's that's good to know okay so now i got to get another light up turned off the background lights so we can get a nice neutral reading out of these guys and we'll go back eight feet i've got them both set at 100 percent and at daylight because this is only daylight on the forza 60 so we'll start with the uh the b100 here first and get our reading at eight feet iso 400 again uh, I got the shutter speed at a 60th of a second, which we could make that. Oh, that's like F8 and a half right there. So that's good. And we've got F4 and three quarters. So about, about a stop and a half difference, which it should be. So a little bit bigger reflect, reflector, more power. I like that. So that's, that's true to what it should be. Now we'll do a color reading um, just to see how close we are. Now I need to find my color meter, wherever the heck I put that thing. Okay, so let's see what this guy is. Still 100%, still uh, set to daylight. Back out here, good for a distance away. So it's saying 4690 when it's set at 55. So let's go, if we bump it up to 65. So still a little warm, 5,300 degrees Kelvin when it's at 65. And that could be due to the environment and a little closer. Yeah, it didn't make much difference, still around 5,300 degrees. So on your output there, it's a little bit, it's saying it's a little warmer 
then it actually comes out. So it's saying it's 6,500. So that's actually not quite true. So it's about 53. Let's go down to 32. So 3,200. That's close, 3180, so that's really pretty close to being right on color temperature-wise at 3200. So I like that a lot. And at 55 again, we are at 47. So that's pretty close, pretty close, within reason for sure. And then you can fine tune it to get more of what you want, but uh, not bad, and oh yeah, there is three fans on this thing, but again, it's, it's really quiet. I mean, it's really quiet. I like it. So now I'm gonna put a soft box on this guy and see what the kind of output, how it works with having a soft box, how I'd probably use it in a uh, interview type situation. We'll put a little box on it and get some readings with that. So the soft box is mounted up on here. It's a good size one with the uh, grid on the front, uh, 32 inches across the front, and it's holding it up just perfectly. So now I'll set it up in a, kind of an interview situation lighting wise and see how it looks. So now we're in a little bit of uh, interview type lighting where I've got the soft box just off to the side here a little bit and this light is holding it, holding the box on just fine it's working really good and I like the ratio I can get with this versus having a little more power in the background to control that ratio is is really nice and that's going to be really beneficial and this is where I would probably use this light the most uh, we will try a little bounce light thing into a ceiling in a little bit just to see if, how much that output will do usually need when you're bouncing you need quite a bit of, of power out of your light to brighten up a room but this would work good bouncing off a wall or something to create a big source like a big window source if you bounce it off of something that's white you get that big source feel across somebody less contrast on the face but so far this thing is working uh, really really well and I'm liking um, what I'm seeing okay another quick test for how I would use this light I talked about using it as a bounce light. Right now I'm in a my home den and you can see the sunlight from the morning streaming in, coming in nice, super contrasty right now. And to make it look a little more real, real lighting, we're gonna add some fill, a bounce fill, which I have above me right here, suctioned onto the window so I don't have any stands in the way and it's just straight above me and I'm going to turn it on now and you can see the natural fill and it doesn't look lit it just looks more opened up with fill so it's a nice way to do it you could do something similar with maybe a fill card bouncing in from the side but with the light I can control the color temperature of it to make it balance out to more what's going on in the environment which makes it really nice and with its compact design and being so light it works off this suction cup and bar that i've got going to keep it suspended uh, in front of me to be in the right spot where i couldn't have a stand here to hold this thing so i mean i could use a grip arm coming in from behind um, but it was just super easy to suction it onto one of the pieces of glass here and bounce it right off the ceiling and the wall a little bit tip forward so i get a little bit more bounce into my face than just off the ceiling, but it also fills the room nicely as well. So that's another quick usage uh, of this light. Uh, playing around with it so far, I'm really, really liking it. I haven't really seen any things I don't like other than the thing I talked about earlier where I can't get it to go straight up, but uh, so far so good. Another quick note here is I'm using the new B1, the Molus B100 light here with the Octabox and uh, it works 
great. I mean, again, no sound with this thing. Actually using it on a job. So worked great here with this big soft box coming at it right here. Big box coming out there. It worked fantastic. So super light too, which was great for when I'm traveling. So again, yeah, using the, uh, the Molus B100, working fantastic. All right, back in the studio, finished talking about this light, um, the 100 watt uh, Molus B100. It's really a small form factor, pretty easy to pack away. Usually the biggest problem with these things is the uh, reflector when you're traveling, just putting the reflector someplace that they're not gonna get crushed. So yeah, I really like the size of this thing. Good so far. I guess it would be nice if it came with a case, its own case, but the price point on this is $229, so that's really affordable for something. Pretty good output, I mean, really good output, 100 watts. Uh, didn't see any problem with that at all. And you got 2700 to 6500 degrees Kelvin change that you can do on this, which is great. Um, you could you got the changes of your color temperature and the power with just a few quick clicks. Got that right this time. <laughs> and also there is um, 13 different options which you can do different like fireplace and things like that. You just hold in this, uh, this button over here, just hold this in and it brings up the menu for the different effects you can do with this. There's 13 different ones. We're not gonna go into all of those, but that's just a quick and easy way to get to the menu on that. Then you just hold that in again and it gets you back to the main reading where you see your color temperature and your output. Um, and then you've got another menu doing the same on the other side. So you have that as well. And another uh, really nice thing is the, um, they've got an app for it. The, the ZY Vega app for it, where you can, um, I gotta reconnect here to it, so I can control the, uh, put this in front of the camera here, I can control the, uh, click on this, there we go, can control the color temperature, the output, then there's some different kinds of, you know, you can go to tungsten lighting, it changes, I don't know if you could see that over there, uh, model light, daylight, so you can control all that, and I can control the uh, brightness as well, which you can see with the fill coming in, changing that as well, so I can control all of that with just a quick, easy slider. Color temperature, you can control right here with an e easy slider, just like this, color temperature control. So the app is really nice, and the different kinds of light, fluorescent, you can change it to fluorescent light, or sunlight and it changes the temperature, all of that on the app. And then you can control, like if you want it to be a CTB filter, like that, a full or a half CTB, you got all that control right there as well. So the app is really nice, works super easy, seamless to uh, connect to it, was really easy. So that's a nice feature just to be able to Bluetooth to this, especially if you've got the light up high, you can use the app to change, you know, your color temperature or the power output is, the apps are great for that when you have that ability. The one thing I don't know about is, let me turn this off because it's adding a bunch of fill. The one thing I don't know is how you would hook a V-mount battery to this to make it work outside on location. Um, I definitely wouldn't use this in the rain or anything because it's pretty well exposed up here. But it does work with my uh, photogenic ion battery that I have here. And we can plug that in right now. So if I plug that in, power this guy up, it easily, easily powers it up with this guy. So I know I can take it on location and use this which is nice, and this is just another small thing. I've had a video about this before, uh, using this on location. So this, this works really well, because I don't know if there's gonna be a way to use a V-mount battery 
on this as well or multiple V-mount batteries. I, I don't know about that yet. So for pros and cons, I, I don't really have too many, any really cons about it other than I can't go straight up and down. And the, uh, to adjust the head up and down, you just have this one little knob right there, which is easy to use one, one quick hand to, to make it adjust. And if you want to order one of these guys, uh, there's a couple links in the description below. You can click on that and uh, get one of these guys uh, ordered for yourself. I'm going to use this guy quite a bit, actually, now that I have it. And um, again, this is just my own opinions that they're not paying me to say anything about this. It's just my opinion on the light, and I think it's a good for the value. I mean, that 229 for this is really a great value. So again, hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm out.